think it's okay not to have the answer, isn't it? Uh, Deborah, Most wonderful Deborah, out, yeah. is in our London news from this morning. Morning to you, and we'll come to you in a moment, Deborah. We're also joined here by Tracy Bleakley, who's the chief executive of Charity Hospices UK. Thanks both very Hi, much. Tracy. Oh, Deborah, your honesty is just really something. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing, you know, you made that a while ago. You, you've had time to kind of think, yeah. and and. <laughs> You know, th this is not a question you need to answer, is it? But how does it, how's it changed your perceptions? Can I just say the whole experience was absolutely amazing. I think anyone who's followed my story will know that actually the idea of me even stepping into that hospice was such a big deal for me. And the staff and the team made it really easy to do it. Um, I've actually admitted to the fact that I've ran to that hospice before and never quite stepped into the drive. Um, and I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to them actually for welcoming me. I was totally and utterly blown away by it. It wasn't what I thought. Um, and I've come away actually thinking, you know what, I can park that and kind of get busy living. And it was great. It was, it was really uplifting. Um, I'm interested as well because um, you think perhaps is it a good place to go and visit, you know, ahead as it were, because then you can sort of in some ways, as you say, relax about it. Yeah, I think for me, I had this misconception about what it actually was. Um, and by talking to the team and talking to the people there, I realised that most of what they do is actually outside of the hospice. Uh, but on top of that, it's not about going to die, it's about living. Um, and I realised that people use the services for so many different reasons. And it's almost like you can tailor and pick and choose how you might uh, use those services and it is very much for me the fact that I've gone there um, means that I can yeah I can just kind of say actually it's not as bad as I thought and now uh, since then I've actually had an amazing kind of um, just feeling in terms of you know what I, I am really happy I'm not scared about what might happen and I, I feel really good at the moment because of it. That's lovely to hear, Deborah. Let's bring in um, Tracy on this. Uh, Deborah's very honest there about her misconceptions about what hospice care would be like. Is that a, is that a common thread? It is, because we associate hospices with death. So we think that going to a hospice is about giving up hope and it's about the last few days of life and, and it's a building, we'll go in, the doors will close behind us and we'll die there. But as Deborah was saying, actually, the earlier you go, you can be supported. Hospices are alongside you, they'll do a lot of work in your home and they can really help you to live. So that's, I think that's really important to, to point out that, um, as Deborah said, you sort of, you go there and you don't leave and, <laughs> until you then... Mm. you know, come out in the, in the way that you don't really want to. But that is, it's actually very different to that. The vast majority of hospice care happens in the home. And the earlier you engage with your hospice, you can go in, you can go um, and have clinics, you can get your symptoms dealt with, talk about um, some of your emotional concerns, spiritual concerns, lots of family therapy, art therapy, building memory boxes. It's a wonderful experience and you can be supported for a year or more. So. I would say to people, engage with your hospice as soon as you possibly can because they're people who will be alongside you and, as I say, help you to have a good quality of life. Mm. And, Deborah, I suppose that's part of it, isn't it? That, you know, these are people who, who are in the hospices who are expert in helping. Yeah, and it's not just helping with the physical symptoms. So, for example, they can absolutely help with pain relief or even administering med medication. Um, it's actually the mental side of things, so it's the impact that it has on kind of not just you, but actually your whole family. And they're the kind of things, they're the services that are actually provided. Um, and it was it was just quite a wonderful place, actually. Mm. And um, I'm not for one second, it's quite, it's quite funny me talking about this, because in a way, I'm, I'm just not there at the moment. And I will admit that uh, despite the whole experience, I still am petrified of dying. And I don't want to die because I feel like I'm very much living at the moment. Um, but I think all of us, whether we are faced with a terminal illness or not, should at least have a conversation about it. Um, because I think just by having the conversation, it breaks down the barriers to it. Mm. And it becomes just a little less, just a little tiny bit less scary. Well, are you, I mean, I know that you've done incredible work um, with the podcast doing mm. exactly um, that. And that has, I mean, I, I know she's here, but let's talk about her. Um, <laughs> she's, done, she's done, you know, they have done an amazing thing because we mm. so, so much, so we don't, it's very difficult, isn't it, to talk about dying, to talk about death, to talk about all those feelings. Mm. 
It is, and so it makes the social space around death and dying quite small. It means that we can't reach out to people and discuss our fears. So the more we talk about it, I think we can feel more supported by people. But it does take some of that fear away. And it's going to happen to all of us at the end of the day. Can I ask you as well? I mean, um, you know, Deborah's talking really honestly about mm. you know, the, the process of death and, and where she, she wants to die and, mm. and looking at hospice care. Is it possible to, to have hospice support but still choose to, to die at home, as, as many people do Absolutely, want to do? Absolutely, yeah. More people are supported by a hospice to die at home than would die in the inpatient unit. And I think that's a nice thing because you build that relationship. Often people change their mind multiple times, and that's fine because different circumstances change. Um, but when people die at home, they've got that relationship with people, and then they carry on working with the family on bereavement support as well. Mm. Um, I want to just before you go, Deborah, offer you huge congratulations as well because you won a, won a big prize with the podcast. Yeah, we did. Thank you. We won the best podcast at the Trick Awards. Although I came up to Dan and I was like, "Oh, hi, Dan. What do you do then?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's always a leveler. It was. It was lovely actually because I got to. Talk Talk to Deborah about. I mean, I obviously knew you very well, and I, when I came to um, Rachel's uh, Thanksgiving service, you yeah. spoke so beautifully at Rachel Bland's service oh, in, in Nutsford. So it was lovely to meet you at the at the podcast awards, and, and congratulations yeah. on you know another oh. incredible achievement. Yeah, massively. Thank you. It's a massive uh, cred um, credit to what Rachel set up, what we are trying to do, and uh, we're just going to continue to talk. And uh, can I just say a massive thank you to those of um, those people that respond to it and uh, share their stories with us. Us. Thank you, Deborah. As ever, it's really lovely to see you. I'm going to let you go <laughs> with your lovely smile. I uh, thank you as well, and um, very much. And it, you know, we, we've been talking about the podcast. If you don't know it, um, it's an amazing listen. You, me, and the big C. Yeah, and it was great, wasn't it? Uh, um, Steve, Rachel's husband, was with Deborah at those Trick Awards. So I got to speak to Steve again. He was on the sofa a few weeks ago talking about the book that Rachel's written for their son, for Freddie as well. So it's a, it's it's amazing to see how uh, it's had such a big influence on so many different people, and is now. I know they don't do it for the awards, but it's it's great to be recognised for for a, a sort of a conversation that's actually changing people's perceptions, mm. isn't it? Which is lovely.